Hello everyone, my name is Kala Siddiqui and today I will be talking about motor controllers for electric carts like golf carts or uh, forklifts, any type of electric vehicle, their motor controllers. Today's video will be specifically about Actor motor controller, that is A-C-T-E-R, Actor motor controller. And these motor controllers are made in Korea and no one in the United States except for the dealer can program these. It's not like the other motor controllers like Curtis. Curtis motor controller, anyone could have a handheld programmer and you can program it. With Actor, you have to send it to the factory or to the dealership in order to have it programmed. So I'm teaching you the way around it so that if you don't have a programmer, how can you use this if you're controller burns out you can buy another one of the exact same model and what board you need to switch to make a, a dead controller fully functional uh, from a different model okay I'm gonna explain all right so let's get started this is the motor controller and this motor controller is brand new good motor controller however my motor controller is defective and this is my motor controller which is defective okay so what I'm doing is taking out this board this circuit board which has the so software in it the programmer and put it on the brand new one which has a different software program doesn't match my golf cart the software is only on this chip and if you could program the new one no problem but the problem is that no one can program it so you have to use the board which has the software and transfer it to this one because these parts these components don't go bad when the motor controller gets fried it it is the power trans uh, transistors that go bad which is completely a different board which I'm gonna show you now and by the way, the, the power controller are these guys. Do you see how every single capacitor is, is, is bulging out? These capac capacitors are bulging out. Every single one of these capacitors are defective. They're about to explode. They're bulging out, uh, like bulging up. As you can see. I mean, you, can, you can't see it on the video, but they are actually like... You know they're sticking up and the the transistors the high power transistors are underneath basically these are all the high power transistors all this is bad so what I'm doing is I'm taking the good board this is the good board from from the from mine and I'm going to transfer it to the brand new one which has a different software so let's get started The tools we need, the, 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 you need special type of tools. First, you need a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, and the second, you need a flathead screwdriver. The third, you need a lock pin removing tool. You can buy these at Home Depot. They remove these lock pins, these guys. So basically, it goes in, in, into those holes, and then you push it. Let me show you. It goes in those holes, you push it, and then it opens it. And that's how you remove them. This tool, this is a specialty tool. Mine is, let's see, what is this? Channel Lock 927. Made in USA. So that's one tool you need. Other than that, it's simple screwdriver. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to remove all the exterior parameter screws, which I have are six, and then I'm going to remove these four, which is total of ten screws that I need to remove. You have to have a container to put the screws in, otherwise you will lose them. So let me go from an angle so you can see. Every screw has a washer and a Loctite washer, a lock washer and a regular washer. 
So you have to make sure not to lose them and put them back in the exact fashion. Okay, so all the major screws are out. Now I have to open these four. Okay, let's open those. Okay, now this right here is a dummy, uh, uh, dummy port. It's not connected to anything, look. It's a dummy port, it's not connected to anything. All these are connected, okay? When you remove this, the gasket comes off. So what you need to do is you need to take back the gasket and put it back in place. The gasket is very, very important because it keeps the humidity out of the uh, controller. So let's put the gasket back in. Let me make sure that I have it lined up correctly because you don't want to put the gasket in correctly so I believe this is how it's gonna go the gasket is a waterproof sealant that uh, protects the motor controller from humidity uh, because the motor controller is in the golf cart uh, which is used outdoors, it could rain, it, it could, you know, you could drive it through like a puddle of water. All kinds of elements could lead to water getting into the controller. That's why they have this rubber gasket all around it. So the gasket is back in place. Now we have to remove these round rubber washers. The round, round rubber washers are actually... Um, protectant of water getting into the connectors uh, to the board all these rubber washers are protectants uh, preventing water from getting inside now we have to unplug this right here let me go from a different angle this plug you press and you slide out and this one right here you press and you slide you have to press you have to press this if you don't press that it doesn't open. So the same thing here. You have to press it and open it. Now we have to open one, two, three, four, five, six screws. All right, let's get started. Removing six screws. Same thing, they have lock washer and simple washer, round washer. from an angle so you can see what the heck is going on here from this angle now okay so the screw is this is not being cooperative so I'm gonna hold it from the bottom So I had to hold it from the bottom, hold this guy from the bottom to open that because it wasn't very cooperative. So those are the things you need to like uh, get ready for that you might need more tools than I originally anticipated. For example, you need a plier to hold those if they are sliding, you know. Only one of them sl slid like that, the rest are not sliding. Okay, now it's very important to remove those lock washers. Otherwise, you're going to ruin it. So this, I think the top camera would be the best view. Let's zoom in a little bit. So this one. Oh, 
like that. I push, it gets open, and then I pull up. So I have to remove all of them. Now, you have to pull it up perpen uh, like perpendicular, parallel to this. You can't pull up this side and then this side. It has to come together because these connectors right here, these three connectors, one, one, two, and three. These are very fine pins that are connected to the very bottom, okay? So you have to come up perpendicular like this, like this. And the connectors that I was talking about are these guys. And two of them came separated to this end, but I'm going to put them back. I'll put them back. So I'll put them back here. And put them back here. These connectors are basically connecting the... Uh, the, the the transistors all the way to the uh, uh, to the circuit control circuit board. So the transistors are are the part that go through very very high current and a lot of pressure and heat. But uh, this part is not going through that. This is more like the software part, which is programmed to the specific golf carts. So this is a brand new one. I'm gonna put my old one here on the new circuitry because this is what goes bad, not this. This one is 99% of the time not defective. It's this guy that, that gets fried when the motor is damaged or batteries go, uh, get damaged or uh, anything that happens, it's this circuit that goes bad 99% of the time. So there are chances that this could go bad, but in most cases, this is the one that goes bad. And by the way, these right here, these are cur DC current measuring uh, toroids. So basically, how much current goes through this, these are the DC current measuring toroids. So it's very important not to damage these. Okay, so now we are putting the original old, old one. At the same time, we uh, see these little pins right here? One, two, three. They have to enter those little notches in, in these guys. So I have to be very, very careful. They have to enter these little notches, these guys, these three notches. So I have to be very, very careful and make sure that each one surfaces from here, here, and here. You should be able to see the pins there when you put them in. Okay, so I'm going to take these out. And let's see. See how the pins appear? Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. See, right now, there are no, there, there are like six golden pins, right? When I pull this up, the pins are gone because these are the pins. These pins must, must plug into this. So you have to be very careful, make sure they align. Because if they don't align and you push it down, you could damage it. That's why. So you have to make sure they align correctly and then you push it down. Okay? Okay, now all six of them, I mean all three of them aligned correctly. See all the pins appear here, all the pins appear here, and and let me go this way so you can see the third one. And all the pins appear here. All of them aligned correctly. Now to be on the safe side, I'm gonna look from this angle too to make sure. Let me go from this angle. I wanna make sure that they are also aligned correctly at the bottom. On this side. They have to be aligned correctly, not only let me let me get a pointing device one second not only they have to align correctly on this edge also have to align correctly on this edge so you have to see with your visual inspection to make sure 
the pins are aligned and they're not sticking out in any way okay once you get confirmation that they are aligned correctly now it's the time to put back the screws in let me zoom out time to put back the screws in It is recommended it is recommended to put all the screws in first like a little loose and once all the screws are in you tighten them you tighten them otherwise you will have uh, some holes will be off center and you will have a hard time so i'm putting all the screws in first All the screws are going in first. And now, once all of them are in, I'm going to tighten them. Make sure that your screwdriver tip doesn't slide and hit the board because you will damage sensitive electronics. And your body has to be grounded. My desk is grounded so there's no static electricity charge and usually I have a hand rest but right now I have a foot rest uh, which grounds my body so I can touch this without damaging it okay so all the screws are tight everything is in place now what am I gonna do I'm gonna put these rings back these guys let's go to the top camera again okay so it doesn't want to go in Happily, you have to open it with this guy. Let's see. Okay, there it is. Once it reaches the notch, see there is a notch here. Let me show you. There is a notch right here. There is a notch. Each one has a notch, and that's where the, the, the locking ring will will be seated that's where it will be seated the locking ring is to hold this from going down okay i'm gonna put this one back in This one is not seated correctly. There you go. It's now seated correctly. Okay, we have more little lock pins to put. And this is the last one. So the only tool that you would probably need is this tool because everything else is almost in every household. People have a Phillips screwdriver and you know standard flathead screwdriver and whatnot. Okay so you put all the rubbers, these rubber sealants will prevent from water leakage from the top and the gasket around this prevents the water leakage from around the casing. And this right here, there's another rubber gasket that prevents the water leakage from around the connector. So it's pretty water resistant. I wouldn't call it a waterproof unit, but it's water resistant unit. Okay, let's put this back. Actually, this is the one we're gonna put back. Yeah, that's the one, all right. So now we put these screws 
and the way it is is that you have to put the lock washer first that thing is the lock washer with the split and then you put the standard washer okay it fell but I know where it fell okay I got it so the lock washer goes in first the standard washer goes in second and you just put it in just like this just like that always do not tight the screw until you've inserted all the screws all around do not tight the screws until then So this is in 5 degrees of clutch, I would use 7 to make sure the screws are tight. For these, you cannot use 7, you have to use 3 or, or less because they will, they're very small screws, they're very weak. I'll put one because even two almost slipped the screw. Great, that's all I wanted. Let me magnetize this. Okay, that screw is not iron or steel, so it's not magnet magnetic screw. I had to put it upside down in order to get the screw back. And that's it. No screws left. The unit is good to go. All right. So this is how you basically um, fix your actor AC motor controller when you don't have the exact replacement part. You basically take the board which has the program software for your specific golf cart and put that board in the new controller um, and you should be good to go. Alright, thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe.